I'll have a few more announcements after our keynote this morning, but at this time, I'd like to call up our keynote presenter, Mary Correa. And as she is making her way here, I get to read her biography that is provided for you in the program booklet as well. Mary A. Correa is the Ka'u Kea'au Pahoa Complex Area Superintendent, Hawaii District for the Hawaii State Department of Education. Mary works together with the principals at nine DOE public schools within the districts of Puna and Ka'u. And as a complex area, they participate in Race to the Top as a zone of school innovation. They believe that through a Lauhoi Kako, they can close the achievement gaps for all students, optimize learning opportunities, and deliver college and career-ready citizens. Mary states, quote, our firm foundation rests in understanding that culture matters, and through Ike Pilina, Ike Honua, and Ike Pikou, we strengthen communities and give hope for a better future. Please welcome Mary Correa. I'm as nervous as can be because this may not work, but that's all right. Aaron, in charge of tech, is going to stand right next to me. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Mary Correa, and I'm happy to be um, a complex area superintendent in the state of Hawaii. In the state of Hawaii, the superintendent is Catherine Matayoshi. The assist deputy superintendent is Ron Nozoy. Under Superintendent Matayoshi, there are 15 complex area superintendents. And in the room with me today, I think are several. One is Lindsay Ball from Hana, Molokai, Lanai, and Lahaina. Also here, I think are Suzanne Mulcahy from Kailua, Kalaheo, and Leah Albert from Kahuku Castle. Now I need to know something about you. How many of you have been to the Big Island? Great. How many of you know where the Ka'u District is? Great. How many of you know where the Puna District is? So you'll know exactly where I came from this morning. And I think we're very appreciative because we embraced culture-based education. We can come back to it. The clip is uh, our two kupuna, Jesse K and Kavai Ula Branco. And they're telling you about the importance of going through um, Keau Town and Ka'u and knowing why children need to know place-based and how important it is for their confidence and for what they need to do. As we worked in Ka'u Pohoa, we talk about context. And context is made up of three, three parts. You're going to have conditions. And when you talk about conditions, I wanted to share what we wrote in our Race to the Top project agreement, which formed the basis of how we had to work. Our plan must address conditions, and Eric Jensen in Risk Factors of Poverty tells you why. Ka'u Kealpohoa has 87% poverty, the highest in the state, based on free and reduced lunch rates. Risk factors can spell out E-A-C-H. E, emotional and social challenges. A, acute and chronic stressors. C, cognitive lags. And H, health and safety issues. We also have a high percentage of Hawaiians, and that is about 46% in the complex area. So what we had to do was we had to have optimized the use of school resources to maximize the use of school infrastructure. So we had to figure out what were we going to do. We also have some challenges, and as you know, if you live in a geographic area, limited transportation opportunities 
In other words, the bus may not come by except at 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening. We have access to resources in a limited fashion, and we have limited employment opportunities where a number of our parents go to Kohala, which is on the opposite side of the island, to work every day. We also talk about competencies. And when we talk about competencies, we're talking about the qualifications and effectiveness of teachers and the qualities and effectiveness of leaders. We're also talking about progress of student achievement, increasing rigor while maintaining relationships and relevance. We're talking about immunities and shortcomings, about improving parent and community involvement, increasing communication both internal and external, and thinking globally but acting locally. We also talk about culture. And when we talk about culture, and you come from an area of poverty, this is sometimes how th people think. We had to address a culture of excuses and get to an enrichment mindset. What kind of excuses? Our kids no can do this work. It's too hard. So we had to move from a victim mentality to high expectations with personalization. No use have online supports, no more technology, no more internet. So we had to figure out how we were going to move from paper pencil to electronic devices. We're in restructuring. Eight of nine schools were in restructuring. So we are limited to what we can do. The answer is no, you're not. You're limited by rigid interpretations, and we have to get to empowered decision making. We have too much on our plate. So we had to figure out how to move from silos to synergy. I need my own to it's a caco thing. We had to move from individual school allocations and figure out how we were going to share resources. All of that forms context. So let's go back and look at conditions. This is the big island, this is Hawaii Island, Hawaii State. This is the big island where we live, and our complexes are Ka'u, Ke'au, and Pahoa, named for the area and the three high schools. A complex is a high school and the feeder schools. If you have elementary schools and middle schools, so Ka'u's feeder is Na'alehu, Pahoa's feeders are Pahoa Elementary and Keonipoko, and Ke'au's feeders are Ke'au Middle, Ke'au Elementary, and Mountain View. And our area is bigger than all of Oahu and all of Maui combined. In fact, we're 100 miles bigger, 100 square miles bigger than Oahu and, uh, Oahu and Maui. These are our demographics. As you can see, we have 87% disadvantaged based on free and reduced lunch, and we have been the highest in the state for more than five years. We have a 46% Native Hawaiian, but we're not the highest in Native Hawaiian, and we'll show you some information. And we have ELL populations that change depending on where you are. So if you live in Kau, we have an enclave of Marshallese, and they they account for maybe one out of every four students. If you are in Keau, it will be 160 out of 800 students in Keau Elementary who are Filipino. So we have to look at culture, not only Native Hawaiian, but we also have to look at other cultures. And for some reason, we have more boys than girls, and we rejoice in having all of them. <laughs> Free and reduced lunch. As you can see, Ka'u, Pahoa is the highest in the state. And right now we have several schools who are at 95% free and reduced lunch. Then you have Nanakuli Waianai in those areas, followed by Hana, Molokai, 
Farrington, and Konawaina. Five years ago, before the recession, our free and reduced lunch rate was 67%. So imagine all of the schools and the complex areas changed. Our native Hawaiian rate is about 46%. Highest are Hana, Molokai, Nanakuli, and Waianae. So when we talk about all of them, when we look at competencies, we want to look at what we've accomplished. In 2012 and 2013, we only had one school in good standing unconditional, that was Pahoa Elementary. We had two schools, Mountain View Elementary and Kiao L, that were no longer in restructuring. And we had six schools in restructuring. In 2010 and 11, one of nine met AYP, which is the adequate yearly progress based on no child left behind. And we are now in ESEA flex, but up until last this year, um, we did have AYP. And last year, seven of nine schools met AYP. When we talk about moving academics, we're talking about closing achievement gaps. Pink, according to the graph up there, is always reading. We always make pink reading and math blue. It's no, nothing about males and females. We just always did that. So as you can see, we're closing the gap for all students. It became important for us to close the gap for disadvantaged students, and equally important to close the gap for Native Hawaiian students. We also closed the graduation gap for Native Hawaiian students. And we have continuing challenges. In Native Hawaiian, when, when you consider attendance at school, good attendance is 95%. 95% means you're absent only once a month, one out of 20 days. We want all schools, we want all students to come to school all the time. So we have to address some of the factors of health. And looking at what are the factors of health, we also have to address factors of stabilizing homes and stabilizing supports for children. Chronically absent children, we have about a little bit more than half are Native Hawaiian. We also have continued challenges with behaviors. While we have 46% Native Hawaiian, we have 55% behavior um, incidents that are attributed to Native Hawaiian. So when you look at all three, they form the context of who we are and what we do. When we did this, we also had to address retention rates of teachers because when we look at when we look at um, when we look at competencies, we also have to look at the competencies of teachers. And we had less than 50% of all of our classes taught by a highly qualified teacher. And we struggled to keep teachers. Because when you're paying $4.50 a gallon for gas, and you have to drive to Kau, which is 52 miles away, that's going to cost you, at 20 miles to a gallon, approximately $100, $100 a week, or $400 a month out of your paycheck because these teachers don't get allowance for mileage. If you drive all the way to Na'alehu, which is 65 miles away, you're paying $500 out of your paycheck. So we want, to, we want to work very hard at improving retention and doing a lot more with homegrown or figuring out how we can, how we can um, do carpools or what can we do to get teachers to school at a cheaper cost. When we came and we started, we started out with Kahua. And then we went, after we did the beginning teachers, we found out that we couldn't only address beginning teachers, we also had to be address leaders. So when we went to leaders, we went into Ho'okele. After we did that, we got some help with our K through three in literacy instruction, and their after school program, Kali'i Mamo, as we did, and Keiki, we're proud to have you here, as we did our Kahua program, 
we also did Mo'enaha, and Mo'enaha is a form of planning. And our newest venture is with Bobby Medeiros in Kapa Aina, Kapa Aina. And that is taking our um, career technical education teachers uh, into, the, into the fields and taking some of our culinary teachers into the fields to see what it actually looks like to grow and to see what kind of programs we can develop with our career tech students. Seven years ago, this man, Walter Kahumoku, came to Pat Hamamoro, superintendent then, and said, we would like to pilot a culture-based program. And if we successfully pilot the program, then we will be able to fund several more programs. So we want you to know that what started in 2006 and 2007 completed this past school year. And we successfully implemented Kahua as well as Hilo Waikea La Pohoi Hoi, West Hawaii, which is Hamakua, Keala Kehe, Kohala, and Kona. We also started it at the Canoe District in Maui. We did it in Windward, and we're going to be starting it in Kauai. So Kahua is the program that we started um, early, and we'd like to share some of the outcomes with you. When we talk about Kahua induction and what we had to do, we had to figure out how we were gonna do this. And so what we felt we needed were two kinds of mentors. You're going to do it to beginning teachers. So we first of all, we had to address how we're gonna get beginning teachers, because not everybody thinks they're a beginning teacher, and not everybody wants to come on Saturdays to come and do some of this work. And people, some people are just not interested in culture-based work. So we figured, we, we worked it out and thought through it and worked with the principals um, to figure out how we were going to do an induction mentoring program. And basically what we did was we went to the Department of Education. We found out everything that the Department of Education had to do or wanted to do, and we got Walter, and we totally embedded it in culture base. So everything we did is totally embedded so we have academic supports from the DOE, and we got culture mentor supports. And we were lucky enough to find our culture supports in our own kupuna. The kupuna who worked in the elementary schools, we had them come and join us, and they now had the opportunity to work with many more teachers, not only in elementary schools. So we started with those supports. And the academic mentors met with their teachers at least once a week, and the cultural mentors at least once a month to provide activities for them. So we had also a core planning team, because when Hilo Waikia joined us, we wanted to be sure that they were going to have the same kind of program. So we have core planning team and mentors supporting the beginning teachers. When we did this, we talked about orientation, training, forums, guide plans, and release days. We also had observations and collaborative logs and teacher growth plans, et cetera. We also had three orientation days and three seminar days. The seminar days were DOE, the orientation days were Kahua, but we did we worked everything together. So just to develop supports requires us or required us to develop a system. When we talk about a system, there are things that are DOE and those are the things that are in the forefront. And those are all the plans we had to do. Then we did things that were kahua. We want to thank the Herb Connie, Mrs. Herb Connie and the Connie Foundation, Sarah Banks, and Olamana School for allowing us to use the GLOs because the GLOs became a very, very important link for us if we were ever to get to college and career because we believe that if the children get to understand what a self-directed learner is, from their cultural perspective, a community contributor, 
a complex thinker, a quality producer, an effective communicator, and effective and ethical user of technology, then they will be college and career ready. And because of that, Sarah Banks and Herb Connie's wife are allowing us to share with you the posters. So if you would like to have a set of these six posters, I think, Walter, can you tell us how? So if you would like one, can you just raise your hand so he knows how long he has to stand? Okay? Okay? So that was great. Okay? So you'll get a set of these posters. Thanks to Sarah Banks and Mrs. Sherb Connie. We also followed Nahonua Mauliola. And I've been waiting for that new book for about a year and a half. So Keiki, I want to be first. <laughs> and yes, we did. We linked the cultural pathways to our general learner outcomes. And we linked everything to the work that we did. So Ike Pelina, Ike, this is going to be too small. I'm going to ask you just to read it if you can. This is Ike Pilina or Relationships, Ike Olelo, Ike Maoli. You notice I leave the words to Walter. Come, come. Okay. We used three of them, but actually we incorporated more than the three. Okay. Ike Olopono. Ike Piko'u, which is also part of Kahua. Ike Na'o'au, the intellect. Ike Ho'oko, applied achievement. Ike Honua, sense of place. And this is the third of the three. So Ike Pilina, Ike Piko'u, and Ike Honua are a part of Kahua, the program. Ike Kuana Ike. Worldview. Thank you. And we linked all of it together. You actually have to come and experience it in order to appreciate what it is, because we actually take the teachers to um, the, the, the various sites and to learn from the kupuna. So if you, ever, if you ever have an opportunity to go with us on our kupuna, the kupuna sing, the kupuna sing all the way from Hilo all the way to Punalu. And then when we get to Punalu, they have activities in Punalu, and then one of the kupuna, Johnson, Mr. Kitazawa Johnson, he has um, a canoe. So then DOE, they must have lifeguards, they must have life jackets, and they go out in the canoe. And the first thing all of the beginning teachers who are in the canoe do, what do you think would be the first thing they would do? What is their understanding? If you're from the mainland, what is their understanding of Hawaii? What's the only thing they see on TV from Hawaii? Da 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 and they jump in a canoe, and that's all you hear. Da, 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 And they're so proud and so happy. Okay? But they also get much experience about the plants and the, um, and the weaving. They learn a lot about the, um, cult the imiloa, the astronomy. And they also learn a lot about the tsunami museum and what the effects of tsunami are. We then, as Walter said, we do Ike Pilina because we feel that new teachers need relationships. If they don't have relationships with the kids, it's not going to count. But the other thing about Ike Pilina is they need to have relationships with themselves. They have to understand themselves. If you're going to attempt to teach a culture-based program, you have to come to grips with your own culture. 
And so the teachers have to learn that part. Then it's about Ikehonua, which is not just only this place Ke'au or this place Ka'u or this place uh, Pahoa, but it's this place, this classroom. And what are the rituals and routines that we're going to have in this room? And what are the agreements we're going to have about how we will behave and act and how we will learn in this room? We also then do Ike Piko'u. Ike Piko'u is all about learning and growth and making personal growth personal goals and how we will move from those goals. And goals are for mentors, they're for teachers, as well as for students. So what we expect of students, we're expecting of the adults. And what we're expecting of the adults, we're expecting of the leaders. In the end, the whole thing amounts to kuleana. And how do you show your kuleana or how do you embrace your kuleana? So we have seminar days, and when we do seminar days, we're talking about design, curriculum design, instruction, and assessment. We use the Moenaha framework, which is the culture-based education framework. And it talks about big picture, the intent, and the skills and knowledge that you want the children to know. So big picture, in the DOE's language, is the learning target. Intent is what is the reason or the purpose you're trying to get out of this and what are all the skills and knowledge you want the children to have. Then the goal is to find not only paper pencil assessments, but performance assessments. These are the parts. We use three seminar days where you have all of the mentors come together with their beginning teachers or mentees and they have lots of discussion about what they learned. And they then practice all the songs and all the words and understanding and the content of what they've done. So in Kumukukui, the conceptual thinking, basically, People will pay no attention to poor production. When it is good, it will attract attention. The big picture, the intent, and the content and skills. The big picture, as kids would say, why do I have to learn this? Why? What's important? What am I going to learn? And how am I going to learn it? And once I learn it, what am I going to do with it? So why, what, how, and what now? The Lao Kukui then are all the instructional strategies. Learning and teaching are not separate. So, we even learned a dance, but I'm not going to do this dance. Ho'olohe, listen. Ho'opili, watch. Ho'ohana, work it. Ho'opuku, let's create. Seminar three is all about assessing. And my favorite assessment is the one that um, Lehua Vincent, formerly principal of Keokaha Elementary, now principal of Kamehameha Hawaii High School. And his assessment was about using the plants and figuring out how do you know if something is strong enough. So he talks about the word hilo. And hilo means to weave. So the students have to weave tea leaf, then they have a tug of war to see if their assessment is good enough, if their weaving is strong enough. So we have curriculum, instruction, and assessment in English, and we also practice it in Hawaiian.
One of the things we always do in reflection is wordles. And I'm not sure who this wordle idea came from, but the bigger the word, the more people said it. The bolder the word, the more emphasis was put into it. We also have to do lots of program evaluation to understand the value of it. And then we go into, after we got the teachers to learn all of this, then we had to convince the principals how were we going to do it? What did we have to do? And ho'okele means navigate, it's a steersman, it's all about leadership. It's a dedication to trying to figure out how they're going to get help. We chose Elau Hoi Kako based on Kamuela Binky's incarnation of the word for us. And this is how we related it to principles. If you're going on a voyage, you need to know where you are going. You need to know why you're going. And you need to know who is going to be in the seats in that canoe. And who can do what in the seats of a canoe. How you liken it to principles in school is that principals have to appoint and assign. They have to know how they're going to get move their schools. Then they have to begin to assign teachers to grade levels. They have to know the strengths of teachers. They have to know the incoming kids. And they have to know the strengths of all the grade levels. So then they have to put all of these pieces together. And Walter may or may not believe me, but we had to do the canoe whole Kelly piece two times just to make sure it got cemented. Well, we had an opportunity, as I said, to get into canoe two weeks ago. Is it two weeks already? That's the last time I saw all the guys sitting up here. And when I couldn't get into the canoe, I want you to know, not one of them helped me. <laughs> it was our team who jumped out of the canoe, who lead me over, put me in a canoe, so we could all learn synchronization leads to synergy. Once you can paddle together, and you can get the feeling of something running smoothly as a gear, you understand how a school has to operate. And when it operates that way, it just goes very far. So Elahoi Kako, let's all paddle together, is what we did. And these are pictures of last two weeks. And part of it is, one of them is Ohana, because we were allowed to bring our Ohana to join us, which is an important Hawaiian value. And there's one other thing I think I need to tell you. If you have a hip size of 40 or more, <laughs> you may not fit in the canoe. Because the widest part, I think, is seats three and four. So other than that, you got to squeeze yourself, which means when you're paddling, you may not be able to go back and forth. Okay? <laughs> Or worse yet, if you're short and that canoe is deep, I mean, these are the things people don't tell you about canoes, okay? If that canoe is deep and you're short, your paddle is only gonna skim the surface, okay? So that's what I got out of it. And, but the thing is, if you learn it, you experience it, okay? And, and I now know who my friends are. We also made kihes. kihes, and we had to make all of our prints on it that represented our leadership styles. And here are three principals, Ken Watanabe, um, Dean Savayos, and Chad Farias. And they wore this when they did a presentation to all the brand new vice principals. And they're carrying their ko'oko, which is their support sticks, and they're carrying all of their other accoutrements of their leadership. And they did this whole thing wearing the kihei, very proudly, talking all about what it means to be a leader. Come on now, come on now. We also went as leaders to Kumukahi, Cape Kumukahi. And I want you to know in all of Hawaii, the sun rises in Kaukeaupahoa. We have the easternmost point. This is a picture of Cape Kumukahi. And we all, the song you sang this morning 
We sang it at Cape Kumukahi. There's about 20 something of us who were there and singing it. And all of a sudden, maybe two or three words after we're finished, we hear another group singing. Talk about a chicken skin experience. Same song, three guys about ahead of us or on the side of us, and they were singing. So they were the refrain the whole time we sang, which was pretty neat. It was a pretty neat experience. Six o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. Luckily, we didn't start at 545, because once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> we graduated in Borders Field at Lahaina Luna, and we became fully, full-fledged Ho'okele, I think. Um, I want to go to the to the clips. If we can show them the clips, it's also on the on the. Um. Aloha, my name is Mary Correa, Complex Area Superintendent for Kau Kaumokua Complex Area. Thank you for joining our continuing journey to close the achievement gap and to increase the internal capacity within the Department of Education in the initiatives. I'm Sharon Beck, Principal of Kau High and Pohala Elementary School. I look forward to all of us taking the stance and having the courage to believe in our students. My name is Chad Keone Farias. I'm Principal of Kiao Elementary School. And my commitment and passion to students is to offer them the opportunities that all students in the state or country have. Being a school in a community that has a high poverty rate, we look for opportunities to give kids the same chance that other students have and to minimize the effects that poverty has on their life. Hi, my name is Ken Watanabe, Principal of Cal Middle School, and I am committed to providing opportunities for our students in becoming 21st century learners to be more productive citizens in our community. My name is Ron Jarvis, I'm the Acting Principal of Cal High School. Uh, my passion, my vision for Cal High School is to have us on par uh, academically with anyone in the state and build it up so it is a, a place that is a pillar of the community and serves our students well. Kathleen Romero, I'm principal of County Poco Elementary. Committed to education, that's been, that's been my life. Education has been my life since small time. I've always been a tutor teacher kind. I've done it Peace Corps when I came back, chose Hawaii to live. We need to make sure our kids grow up with, the, with what we promised them, with we promised them a good future. Hi, my name is Sylvia Lee, and I'm principal of Mountain View Elementary. And I am committed to helping create an environment where what we deliver to students is most meaningful for them, and they're going to use in their lives, and it's and they're going to want to be in school because of that, because they're engaged and because it's all about them. Hi, my name is Teddy Burgess, and I serve as principal at Nalehu Elementary School. And I'm firmly committed to student achievement. And one of the ways to get to student achievement is to have a quality teacher in every classroom. I'm Catherine McPherson, the acting principal of the whole elementary school. And I am committed to this journey of improving the schools of our complex area, of it helping students become all that they can be, and to help our students begin to dream and begin to follow those dreams into the future for high school and beyond. My name is Dean Ceballos. I am the principal of Pahua High and Intermediate School. Our students will become the best students, not only on the Big Island, but in Hawaii by dedicating ourselves to increasing our ability to be effective in the school, to transform our students, to be able to be whatever they wish and desire to be. My name is Mary Correa. I'm the Complex Area Superintendent for Ka'u Ke'au Pohua Complex Area. We just wanted to be sure that you got to see some of the educational officers and what they had to say about their dedication to using culture-based in the work that they have to do. Thank you. I do, have, I do have one more thing I wanted to say. Um, a few, maybe about a month ago, uh, we met in a meeting with Cheryl Kauhane Lupinui. And 
Cheryl posed several questions, and it became very important for us to um, hear the questions and, and figure out how we were going to work it. Um, the two questions she asked was, what is, the, what is the responsibility of the Department of Education to promote Hawaiian language and Hawaiian culture to the students? Equally important, what is the responsibility of the Native Hawaiian community to get our students to thrive in a global society? And so we have to think how we're going to actually get that done. And then finally, there are two other things. As a result of all the work we did, we started with beginning teachers, we went to the administrators, we did the K-3, to we did the career tech. We also wanted to address all teachers. So we were very, very fortunate to have a Culture Matters Day, courtesy of Ke'ala Liloy and Kamehameha Schools. And at that day, we were very privileged to be in a setting just like this. And we had Eddie Kamai come and talk to 600 educators in Kaukiao Pohoa about the Keepers of the Flame. And we wanted to thank Mrs. Kamai and Teresa for bringing Eddie. Eddie, come. Thank you very much. This is Marna Kamai. We had that same kind of culture day on May 30th. And at that time, we were doing common core state standards. And what we did was we asked Kamehameha Schools and Walter Kahumoko and his team, could they come out and show us how you can infuse culture-based? And my favorite comment about this day deals with the conference planner, Jason Franks. Because when you talk about the subject that's hardest to teach and infuse culture, it's mathematics. And Jason Franks showed everybody how you can infuse culture based into mathematics. So I would like to applaud him. Okay. It was a wonderful day and a wonderful experience about how you can take just a few people, then a few teachers, then the administrators, and end up working with 600 people, including educational aides and um, all of the teachers, and then to get all of the counselors and the behavioral health people together. And we brought together the American Society for School Counselors to say how now can we get kids to college and career? Because there's one thing to say we want to do college and career. There's a whole new ball game to actually make it happen when you have to pay for it, when you have to have the mindset, and when you have to write for scholarships. Thank you.